to be solving trigonometric integrals. That's integrals involving trigonometric functions, trig functions. There's a couple of main uh, identities that we should know. Sine squared of x is going to be, or is, 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. That's one of them. And cosine squared x is going to be 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. We have these two identities. Suppose somebody asked you what cosine, the integral of cosine to the fifth x times sine x dx is. The answer is very straightforward. If you let u be cosine x, so then this here would be u to the fifth, well then du will be negative sine x dx. So we need to put in a minus and we bring a minus in front. So there's the minus in front. Like I said a moment ago, that's u to the fifth. And that's du. So it's negative u to the sixth over six. This minus is that one and the integral of u to the fifth du is u to the sixth over six plus c. And u happens to be cosine of x. And there is your answer. It's just the u to the n du integral. If you had the integral of sine squared 2x times cosine 2x dx, like I advised before, you should always let the angle be u. Except if the angle is just x or y or v. If it's more complicated than just x, let u be the angle. Well then du is 2 dx. Well, if I sneak a 2 in, then there's du, but I have to bring a half in front. Okay. Now, if I let v equal sine x, I'm going to make a second substitution, then dv is cosine x dx. Okay, actually, let me first write it in terms of u. Ignore this for a moment. Make believe I didn't say it. So we have one half the integral of sine squared u times cosine u times du. This is sine squared u, cosine u, and that's du. Okay. Now, oh, I do have one silly error. V should not be sine x. V should be sine of u. So this is one half. Well, that piece is, well, there's the integral sine. This piece is v squared. And cosine u du, if u is sine, if v is sine u, then dv is cosine u dv. So this here, dv is cosine u du. Well, that's dv then. This here is exactly what I have. Okay, so it's 1 half v cubed over 3 plus c. It's over 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times v is v to the third plus c. But v is sine of u, sine of u, but u is 2x. So 
So it's sine 2x to the third power over 6, which if you prefer, you can write it down like this. I ran out of room, so I'll write over 6 that way. The cube can go before the angle, plus C. on top, but oh, another one that's very famous and you should just know is that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1. Now, sine, so we want everything, you want to get sine to a power times this cosine x dx. If you have sine to a power x and then cosine x dx. If you get this, well, if that's u, so then that whole mess would be u to the n. If u is sine x, well, then that's du. It's just a u to the n du. If you can get cosine to the power x times negative sine x dx, and the minus is no problem. If you don't have it, just put it in. Well, if I call this u, well then that's du. That is where u to the n du. We can integrate that. Now, sine to the fifth x is sine to the fourth x times cosine squared x. And the sine x that I didn't write here, I'm going to write at the end. Now, sine squared, I can get sine squared to be cosines. Remember that sine to the fourth x is equal to sine squared x all squared, because 2 times 2 is 4. Using my big identity right here, I know that sine squared x, just bring it to the other side. Excuse me, just bring cosine to the other side. Sine squared x is nothing more than 1 minus cosine squared x. But what I just underlined, that's sine squared x. I have to square it. Times the rest. Times this. Cosine squared x, sine x dx. Now when I square 1 minus cosine squared x, I get 1 minus 2 cosine squared x plus cosine to the fourth x times the rest. Cosine squared x sine x dx. Now, I'm going to multiply what's in the brackets by cosine squared x. That is, I'm going to distribute the cosine squared x. And I get cosine squared x times 1, which of course is cosine squared x then minus 2 cosine to the fourth x plus cosine to the sixth x times sine x dx. But this is cosine to a power, actually it's the integral of cosine to a power 
times sine x dx minus 2 cosine of the fourth x sine x dx plus integral of cosine to the sixth x sine x dx. Let's try to sneak the answer here. If cosine x is u, well then that's du, and this part here is u squared. So I'm going to get u cubed over 3 minus the 2 just factors out. The integral of this times sine x dx. Well, if u is cosine x, this is u to the 4th du. That's u to the 5th du. That's u to the 5th over 5. Plus, if cosine x is u, then this is u to the 6th times du. Why? That's u to the 7 over 7 plus your constant. And there's the answer. I broke off just one sine x and everything else had cosine x's in it. And it's a technique that you have to have. You want to break off either a sine x or a cosine x. That will be your du. Sine x dx or cosine x dx, that's going to be your u. sine x 
cubic minus u is sine of x raised to the fifth power. The odd power of the sine or the cosine, that's the one where you want to break off either that sine or cosine x. Of course, if they're both odd, well, deal with it. For example, this same problem that we started with right here. If instead, if it was sine cubed x, if it was sine cubed, the power was cubed. The power was cubed. Well, all that happens is when I distribute the sine cubed x, I get sine cubed x minus sine to the fifth x. I get u cubed minus u to the fifth. And that that's all that happens. It'll become u to the four over four. u to the six over six. Four, four, six, and six. Of course, I didn't need to do it that way. I could have, instead of breaking off a uh, cosine x from the cosine cubed x, I could have also broken off for sine x. Try to do it that way. And then when I break off for sine x, I'll have sine squared x. If I pull it, now this is sine cubed x. If I take away or separate our sine x, well then I would have sine squared x left over. So instead of having cosine x, I would have sine x. This will still be 3. This will now be squared. But I can convert the sine squared x to 1 minus cosine x. And when I multiply 1 minus cosine x by cosine cubed x, I'll have a polynomial in cosine x's. And du will be right there. If u is sine cosine x, du would be right there. Of course, I would have to put in the minus sign. those formulas up there. Now, we've used the bottom left one, sine squared x plus cosine squared x. We used that one a couple of times. Well, when do we use the ones above? Well, if somebody asked you to find the integral of sine squared x dx, well, since it's an even power, you're not going to get anywhere by breaking off for sine x. That is, if you broke off our sine x from the sine squared x, there's the sine x we broke off. Well, we have this one left over times dx. That dx. Well, the thing is, if I call this u, this is not du. Okay, then you say, well, that's not a problem. I'll convert our sine x's to cosine x's. Well, you can. You can convert sine squared x's to some power, to sine x's. Or I meant to say cosine x's. What you would do in this case is use the formula uh, that sine squared x is 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. The over 2 I would bring in front. And so far, with the over 2, that's just sine squared x. Do not forget the dx. And then, I would let u equal 2x. So then du would be 2dx. So if I put a 2 in here, that's du. But then I have to bring 
another half in the front. So I have one quarter, half times a half is a quarter, times one minus cosine u du. But this is a pretty okay integral. The integral of one du is just u minus, and the integral of cosine u du is sine of u. And I didn't mean to put an integral sign. Plus c. And now all you do is substitute back. That is, you get one half of u, which is 2x, minus sine of u, where u is 2x, plus the number c. Suppose you have the integral of secant to an odd power times tangent x dx. Actually, I guess it doesn't even matter if it's an odd or an even power. What you do is you break off one of their secant x's. So now you have secant squared x. There's the secant x we broke off. And this is secant cubed x still, times tangent x dx. So this is going to be the du. Because if I let u equal secant x, well then du will be secant x tangent x dx. So this is du, and this is u squared. I meant to put the 2 there, excuse me. That's u squared. So an integral of u squared du, that's an easy one. That's u cubed over 3, where u was secant x. can leave the answer that way, or of course you can put the cube there. Eyes away, you're done. So, in addition to doing lots of problems, you need to study how you're going to handle these things. You need to study that if you have secant of any power x times tangent x dx. We have it to any power. Well, you're going to let u equal, oh, so you want to break off a secant x. So if you have m of them, now you have one less times the one you just broke off tan x dx is also there. Well, if I call that u, if u is secant x, well then du is going to be that. We rigged it to be there. Secant x tangent x dx. Well then, we have u to the m the integral of u to the n minus 1 times du. That's an easy one. You add 1 to that power, you get m, and then you divide by m plus c. So it's over m plus c. And u is secant x to the mth power. 
Okay. So let's see if what I want to try is going to work. Suppose you just have the integral of tangent x dx. Well, there's tangent x dx. If I also had secant x, I have to justify that by putting secant x to the negative 1. I will not write, and this is why this notation is bad, I will not put the minus 1 there because that means the inverse secant function. Remember, negative 1, when the bases are the same, supposed to add the exponents. There's an understood 1 there. When you add them, you get 0. And anything, including secant x, to the 0 power is 1. So this is just 1. Okay. But now, if I let u equal secant x, well then du will be secant x tangent x dx. So this piece right here will be u to the negative 1. And this piece right here would be du. But this is just du. I can put this in the bottom as u. That's ln of u. That's ln of secant of x plus c. That is, here the derivation of what the integral of tangent x is. Never really thought of it that way before. But I built it up. I got what I wanted to get. I wanted to get secant x times tangent x dx. And I did. Try one more like that. Suppose you have, well, we did it in general. I mean, no matter what the angle is, you have secant x to the seventh power. And then you have times tangent x dx. You can break off a secant x from here, and you'll have secant to the 6x times secant x. That gives you secant to the 7x times the rest. Well, if I call secant x u, I have u to the 6. And what do you know? If u is secant x, what I just circled is du. So I get u to the 7, so over 7, plus c, where u is secant x. You have every right, if you choose, to put the 7 there. Okay. Mm. What if we have secant to powers? times tangent of odd powers. Suppose we have secant to some power times tangent cubed x dx. Well, remember, if sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, I can divide everything by cosine squared. This here will give me tangent squared x plus that's 1. And 1 over cosine is secant. So 1 over cosine squared will be secant squared x. So I just bring the 1 to the other side and I have another way of writing tangent squared x. So I have secant to the fourth x tangent squared x because I want to break off a tangent x dx. That's going to be part of the du. Now, instead of tangent squared x, I'm going to write secant squared x take away 1. In fact, I'm even going to pull out or break off a secant x. 
So I have a secant x tangent x dx at the end. Now I just distribute secant cubed x times secant squared x secant to the fifth x minus one times secant cubed x. And all of this gets multiplied by secant x tangent x dx. Well, if I let u equal secant x, well, then this is u to the fifth minus, fifth minus, that's u cubed. And again, if u is secant x, why well, that's du. So coming up here, I get u to the sixth over six minus u to the four over four plus e. I just add one to the powers and I divide by that number. But u is secant x, so I get secant x to the sixth over six minus u is still secant x, get u to the four over four plus c. And there's the answer. That's what you do. You have an odd power of tangent x. Yes. Well, again, we know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Divide by cosine squared. And we get that tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. So then I would get, remember, this is secant x. Excuse me, this is secant squared x squared dx. So then I would get tangent squared x plus 1 squared dx, which is tangent to the fourth x plus 2 tangent squared x plus 1 times dx. Now, all right, so 
just becomes the tangent of 4x dx plus 2 times, I backed it up to 2, 2 times the integral of our tangent squared x dx plus the integral of 1 dx, which of course is just x. So what we need to do is deal with each of these separately. Now, for tangent to the fourth x, how I'm going to handle that is as follows. This, so, let me do this on the top. Do side work on the side. Haven't done an interval like this in a while. Alright, so tangent to the fourth x dx, well, this is the integral of tangent squared x times tangent squared x dx. That's tan to the fourth dx, exactly what I have here. But now, tangent squared x is secant squared x minus 1. secant squared x minus 1 dx. Okay, now distributing, this gives me two intervals. Integral of tangent squared x times secant squared x minus the integral of tangent squared x. And I forgot to put dx in, sorry. Well, if I let u be tangent x, well then secant squared x dx is du. This is just u squared du. That's going to be u to the 3 over 3 minus the integral of tangent squared x dx. secant squared x is tangent x. Why? Because the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x minus the integral of 1 is x. So I have to take away tangent x minus x. Okay. Now, if I be real slick, I'm talking about what happened after this minus sign. I need, well, I needed to take away tangent squared x, and now I need to add two integral of tangent squared x's. Minus one of those integrals plus two of them is plus one. So inside the brackets, I have the answer to integral of tangent squared x. Overall, I have plus one of them. All right, plus the integral of 1 dx is x. And the plus, the minus x plus x cancels. And I get tangent cubed x over 3 plus tangent x plus c. If you add five integrals and you take away three of the same integrals, you really have two of those integrals. 5 minus 3 is 2. Okay, let's try one more. In case we need these identities, oh, I erased the identities. Oh, well. 
Now, the next one is also a little bit different. Now, the angles I've been using lately has always just been x. If it's other than x, well then call it u, and then the angles are just u, which is the same as if they were just x's. Now, suppose you have the integral of, I don't know, x times sine squared x dx. Now, to me, this looks like an integration by parts. Now, I know that I can take the derivative of x enough times, namely two times, to get to zero. The thing is, can I integrate this enough times? Can I integrate sine squared x dx two times? First, I don't do anything. I write it down. Now, can I integrate it? And the answer is absolutely, at least the first time. Because I know that sine squared x is 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 dx. Well, the over 2 just bring in front. The integral of 1 is 1 minus the integral of sine of 2x. Well, I meant to say cosine of 2x. Well, that's going to be sine 2x over 2. Work it out. Okay, so I have that answer. It's 1 half, 1 minus sine 2x over 2. Well, there's the half, this half. Can I integrate what's in the brackets? Why, of course I can. The integral of 1 is x minus, there's my over 2, that over 2. The integral of sine of 2x, the integral of sine of 2x dx, and if I call that u, then that would be 2 dx. du would be 2 dx. have to bring out the half. So sine 2x, so there's the half. Sine 2x is sine of u. And 2 dx is du. So I get negative 1 half cosine of u, where u is 2x. So I get plus, minus minus is plus, cosine of 2x over 4. This was a pain in the neck to do. I'm not saying no. But imagine trying to do regular integration by parts two times. Okay, so we're not even done yet. It's this product plus and then minus this product. Well, the first product, x times a half, for example, is x over 2 times 1 minus sine 2x over 2 minus a half, excuse me, 1 times this, well, it's just that, minus a half times x plus cosine 2x over 2 plus your arbitrary constant. Okay, so sometimes you have to uh, do integration by parts. Okay, that's going to finish this section.